Hey everyone, my name is Chris, and today I'm going to be talking about my um, automating abstract art through the library of Pi Auto GUI. Um, now, before diving into anything, I included a timeline for this video, so if you want to skip around, feel free to do so. Also, I'm going to apologize. There's definitely some construction going on in the background. Additionally, I'm feeling a little under the weather today, so I might be sniffling throughout this video. Um, but hey, that's not going to stop me from doing some cool programming. So let's uh, let's jump right into it. Now I'm going to start out by talking about the library that we use, and uh, n this beautiful painting that I made would not be possible. Observe its beauty would not be possible if it weren't for Pi Auto GUI. And that is the library that I use to make all of this happen. Now this is a function, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, this is a library that helps to automate your GUI or graphical user interface. Now for those of you who don't know, basically like for example, your screen is a graphical user interface. And if you want to move your mouse or type things, Pi Auto GUI can help automate those things. Um, and it can do that through some of the functions involved. So for example, uh, this move to function, this will move my mouse to the point of 100, 150, where 100 is an X coordinate and 150 is a Y coordinate on your screen. So run, and my mouse goes to that point. Pretty cool. You can see, um, wrong command. There, that's its function signature, uh, just an X and a Y. Um, we have a click, we have a click with a coordinate, we have a move, we have a double click, uh, we have a write. This will type things for us. So for example, let's do this. We also want to give ourselves a little buffer. This time.sleep just essentially makes our program rest for, uh, in this case, two seconds. So I can do that, do that, do that. Gives me time to switch. Now this is not me typing. If this were me typing, you would hear my very loud keyboard, but it didn't happen. So that is that function, very cool. We have some display boxes. For example, this. What is your name? What is your name? I don't know. <laughs> um, so that's cool. Wait, out of curiosity, can you store it as a variable? Say hee hee. Yep, you can. Sorry, I'm doing a little experimenting on the fly. What type is it? Okay, it's a string. Cool. So you can store those as inputs. Um, you can get Pi Auto GUI to do screenshots. You can locate images on screen, which is actually very useful. I'm going to show that in a second. Um, additionally, here's another thing that I think is pretty cool. I haven't quite found a use for it, but uh, they are the, the tween and the easing functions, which move your mouse in a way that is very abnormal. And I really, really like it. So it goes and moves your mouse to this coordinate, but it does so in an ease in elastic way. That's like its movement property. Pretty cool. Uh, let's change the coordinate. Maybe like, yeah, why not that? So it goes to the point of X 1000, Y 100. And just for, so FYI, this is the point zero, zero. So the top, this top is actually uh, indicated with a Y coordinate of a zero. The bottom isn't zero, the top is zero. And the left is indicated with an X coordinate of zero. And on the very right of the screen, it's going to be that max value. At the very bottom of the screen, the Y is going to be its max value. 
Um, so just just uh, an FYI, because during some of these uh, these things, you're going to be adding coordinates and adding like a left value to a, a, a width value and random things like that. So it's pretty useful. So now that we talked about the library, I want to talk about my program itself. So we start out, we import our libraries, and we define this function called brushes. Now we are able to locate this brush button right here through this function where we say locate on screen brushes JPEG with a confidence of 0.8. Now what is brushes JPEG? Brushes JPEG is this. Quite literally, I went into paint. I used Windows snipping tool. I did this. I have a little delay, sorry. Um, I took a screenshot, I saved it, and I put it in my folder and I called it brushes and saved it as a JPEG. Easy. So I did that and it locates the brush on the screen. And let's, let's uh, show what it returns. Uh, but again, we want to do a, a time.sleep to give myself a second to um, switch over. So module has no time. Oh, sleep. Okay. Okay. Should be done. Now, this is what we get. This brush button has an X coordinate, or at least its left most point in which case would be this, this line is at 313. Um, its top is at 88, and we have its width and its height. So very cool. So when it comes to designating a point to click, these values are very useful, very useful. And uh, we locate on screen the brushes JPEG, which is the slide down menu. After we click, um, that clicking is done right there. After we, we move the mouse, then we double click, and then we locate the drop down menu, and then we randomly select an item off the drop down menu. And these are some of the operations to do that. Um, basically, just trying, because I want this to be random and abstract, which is kind of, in my mind, abstract is synonymous with random a little bit. Might be a little disrespectful to abstract artists, but that's how I view it. Um, you know, an art is to each their own. Um, but anyways, I, I basically am just trying to locate a random coordinate in the, the drop down menu to randomly select a brush. Next we have our sizes, which does almost the identical thing as brushes function, except instead I took a screenshot of the sizes, I click, I randomly select one of these four sizes. Easy. Our colors function is a little bit longer but um, somewhat similar of a process. So I, I took a screenshot of edit colors, and then I wanted to, um, instead of randomly clicking in this box, I wanted to incorporate a different process for this one. So instead what I did, because each color is essentially a combination of three things, hue, saturation, and luminosity. Now you could also say it's a combination of uh, red, green, and blue, which is also very true. But I just decided to do hue, saturation, and luminosity. So I'm basically, uh, hue has a max value of 239. Uh, saturation has a max value of 240. And luminosity has a max value of 240. Essentially what I did is I'm inputting random numbers into here, somewhere between zero and their maximum value. Um, but in order to do that, I locate them on screen again using another screenshot. So this is the JPEG that's loaded, for example, for luminosity. And it'll locate on screen luminosity. And I told it, my mouse to go a little bit more to the right. And then it'll input a randomly generated uh, number. So in terms of what that would look like, let me show you. So my mouse is going to move, and it's going to do that. Cool. 
So that's my colors function. Um, and then uh, I wrap all of these three functions that I just talked about, sizes, brushes, and colors, into config. And with config, essentially configuring my drawing, the setups. But we haven't got to the actual drawing itself, and that's where this function comes into hand, draw, which takes a parameter speed. The lower the speed value, um, ironically, the uh, faster it's going to go. Whereas the higher the speed value, the slower it's going to go in terms of its relative positioning to one. So essentially anything uh, with a speed value greater than one is going to lower its speed. Anything with a speed value lower than one is going to uh, increase its speed. So here are canvas dimensions. Um, here are, uh, for the, the theory, the idea behind this draw function is essentially I wanted to generate a list of random x, uh, random coordinates. So for example, x chords equals 50, 100, 600, just random, random coordinates. And then y chords would be something like 90, uh, 600, 400. Now these are obviously not random. These are all um, even numbers that end in zero, but Essentially what I wanted to do is combine these two things to get a list of random Cartesian plane coordinates because with each element of a Cartesian plane coordinate uh, or Cartesian, each coordinate on a Cartesian plane has two elements, an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So here are the two lists and these would be generated random instead of me just typing them out. And essentially what I did was um, X and Y chords is going to be a, uh, a list as a result of my zipping of these two. Um, so we'll say x chords get zipped with y chords. Essentially I will fee, uh, this zipping x and y chords and then right there. So the zipping function combines the two things that are being fed into it, which are X chords and Y chords, and it attaches each at an element level. 50 gets attached with 90, and 100 gets attached with 60. I feed these things in into my drag to function, where it goes through my Cartesian pair list, feeds in the X of each element, the Y of each element, with my timing variable that's influenced by the speed parameter, I am able to um, operate at a random speed. We see that it's also drawing from this uh, random uniform distribution. So it's a random speed, although largely influenced by the parameter speed, relatively. Um, and then we are, while the mouse is being dragged, we're also clicking the left button, which should simulate drawing. And that's what that function does. So just to showcase that, I'll let it go by itself. So it should, sorry, construction in the background. It should just move my mouse randomly and then drag and drop. Cool. So very easy. And also a another note, I'll do this one more time. If you want to stop your program mid, uh, well, it's, okay, it's not wanting to stop. Okay, I needed to be more forceful there because um, it kind of messed up some things. I don't know what these red dots are. <laughs> All right, that was a little chaotic. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, essentially, it's very ironic because I was trying to... Um, I was trying to show the failsafe, but instead kind of do the opposite. Uh, why did these get put here? Probe speed equals float input. Yeah, that belongs there. Uh, oh, it did. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Time to sleep. Sorry guys, this kind of messed up my program. What just happened? Oh, wait, that belongs here. 
Wait, does it? Guys, I don't even know what's going on anymore. I think this actually belongs here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so that was chaotic. But essentially, theoretically, a fail safe occurs when you're able to move the mouse to the left hand, the top left hand corner of the screen. I did a very poor job of doing that because I didn't move my mouse quick enough, but theoretically that's what happens because it has this fail safe property um, right there. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, ignoring the disaster that just happened, let's let's see my program run. So let's do a run all. We want 10 different colors painted. Um, we'll do that at a pretty normal speed. And then switch over to my paint. We also want to start a new paint job. And then we're just going to let it paint. Nice. So uh, it's, it's very cool and honestly a, a little mesmerizing to watch simply based on the fact that um, they're very precise mouse clicks. And I don't know, it's just kind of cool to see something like this being automated for some reason. And I know this is a very ridiculous use case and uh, or it could be seen as such. But this is simply just to demonstrate its capabilities. Like we can create a Python program that does, that can do random tasks like this. So say you wanted to, I don't know, make this into a program that uh, opened up all of your emails or like essentially upon, and I've actually kind of given a little thought to this, like making a program that almost uh, helps with your morning routine where you're logging into your computer you could run your program to open up all your emails, open up all the news that you might be checking or random websites or uh, get your Spotify running, um, things like that. You could make a program that could identify all those things using images, using mouse movements, using um, typing into the keyboard from PyAuto GUI's commands, and you could do things like that. Also, if you're doing like uh, very menial Excel work, you could implement this there. I know Excel has VBA and it can VBA can largely automate most of the stuff done there by itself. But if that didn't work, you could use PyAuto GUI um, to, to, you know, like inputting formulas or clicking on cells or, or things like that. So I, I think there are definitely some options to, to do some of those things. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So the drawing's complete. Uh, I just created a little alert box. Do I like it? Yes, I do. Um, and that is my, my painting. It's amazing, right? Let's put it in a frame. Now, what I really like about it is because each coordinate is differing in its uh, length, strictly from a coordinate geographical plane um, math, type of situation, but also differing in their durations, like time. So what this re results in is different, sh uh, almost stroke densities. This line stroke from the painting is more dotted, whereas this is more condensed and more continuous. So we can get a variety of different strokes, a variety of different sizes, brushes, colors, um, line shapes but not line essentially all my lines are straight there's no line that's going to be like this or like that or like that everything is like that so in the future i'd want to change this program to maybe incorporate more uh animation in the line strokes but i mean overall i'm very pleased with this program I thought it was very cool. Um, you know, I just wanted to make something that was fun and I had fun making this. So um, if you, sorry, uh, I was trying to find my, my painting that I, that I made. 
uh, there. So if you enjoyed the video, if you learned something, if you like the library, if you uh, want to paint something yourself, let me know. If there are any other libraries you want me to explore in the future, also let me know. I thought Pi Auto GUI was really cool, and I really like the idea of just getting to know random random libraries that Python has, because there's a lot out there. Um, that being said, thank you for watching, and have a great day.